In this video, we'll take a look at how to calculate a correlation matrix in Microsoft Excel. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table and I'll start by copying these values. I'll paste them here. I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm also going to paste them here. I'll go ahead and right click the mouse, go to Paste Options and select Transpose. Now that pasted it that way, so that's perfect. I'll double click on this to expand. Let's go ahead and left align that. Now here in my correlation matrix, a variable correlates with itself perfectly. So I'm going to put one down each of these. So social support and social support is one. College GPA with college GPA is one and so on. So the main diagonal we call it is always 1.0. Now here I'll calculate the correlation between social support and SAT. And here I want to use the Corel function. So equals C-O-R-R-E-L, and then I type an open parenthesis, and notice how it says array 1 and array 2. These are just my different columns of data. So since it's SAT score and social support, I'll select SAT score first. I'll press and hold the control key. It should be the command key for max. And then I'll go ahead and select the social support values. And those are all selected, so that looks good. Notice here, the values are presented. This says B2 right here. And the colon means continue all the way until you reach B31. That's our last value. Same thing here, C2 through C31. That's the social support values. Notice I did not select the variable names. I don't want those when I'm doing the corral function. Okay, now to finish this function, I just need to do a closed parenthesis and then press Enter. All right, so that's my correlation. So that looks good. Now we'll do college GPA and SAT score using the exact same approach. I'll start with SAT score. Scroll back up. Press and hold the control key. Select college GPA. Take a look at that. That looks good. Closed parenthesis, then enter. Finally, I'll calculate the correlation between social support and college GPA. And I notice here this is in bold format. We'll clean this up in just a minute, so don't worry about that. Okay, social support. And then I'll press and hold the control key again. College GPA. Now, one note, it's very important. You can't try and streamline this and select all of these values at once. So you don't want to select both variables at once because those would just go in right here. And Excel expects one array or variable typically with another array or variable. So they need to be separate as you see here with the blue and the red or pink. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this. Close parenthesis, press enter. Okay, perfect. We've got our correlations. That looks great. So let's go ahead and format this. I'm going to dial these down to two decimal places and then I'll center them so they're consistent with the others. Let's go ahead and center this value. We can dial these down as well. Okay, that looks good. I'll go ahead and bold these two values by pressing Control B. Now what this tells me is the correlation between SAT score and social support is 0.18. So it's positive. It's not an extremely strong correlation, but I'd say it's mild. So there's a, a positive correlation between SAT score and social support. So that means those who have greater social support tend to do better on the SAT. And those who have low social support tend to do worse on the SAT. So it's a positive correlation. Same thing here for social support and college GPA. Slightly higher than the first one we looked at, but still relatively small or mild. So those who have higher social support tend to have higher college GPA. And then finally, our strongest correlation, and this is quite strong, is between SAT score and college GPA. Now if you think about this, that should make sense. People who do better on the SAT tend to do better in college as measured by GPA. And people who do worse on the SAT tend to do worse in college. And the relationship is pretty strong at 0.64. Now because it's not a perfect 1.0, that doesn't mean that someone who doesn't do well on the SAT, it's impossible for them to do well in college. That's not true at all. There's always exceptions to this, of course. But 
What this is saying is, is that in general, the better one does on SAT, they tend to do better in college. But there are always exceptions to that. The relationship by no means is perfect, but it's pretty strong. Okay, let's finish by formatting this table just a bit so it looks a little bit nicer here. So I'll go ahead and make a thick outside border. Let's put in some basic grid lines here. Let's take a look at that. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to go ahead and shade this as well. Okay, that looks good. And then finally, I'll italicize these. Okay, that looks great. We've just developed a correlation matrix or correlation table between our three variables. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.